This story has been recorded at an Addictive Eaters Anonymous meeting in New Zealand. You can email us at contact at aeanz.org. And tonight being the first Friday of the month, we have a speaker who will share for about 15 minutes, followed by normal sharing. And our speaker tonight is Louise. Thank you, Kate. Hi, I'm Louise. I'm an addictive eater. Um, I thought I would just read a little bit out of um, Isabel Sees It, give myself a topic, I thought. Um, because this is just a little reading that I think is just really, I don't know, it speaks to me about all that's on offer in this program that I didn't know when I came in. And so I'll just read it and then I'll, I'll share a bit. Um, so it's called A New Life. So as Bill says it, page 8, and it's from a grapevine of 1957. In sobriety, is sobriety all that we are to expect of a spiritual awakening? No, sobriety is only a bare beginning. It is only the first gift of the first awakening. If more gifts are to be received, our awakening has to go on. And it does go on. We find that bit by bit we can discard the old life, the one that did not work, for a new life that can and does work under any conditions whatever. Regardless of worldly success or failure, regardless of pain or joy, regardless of sickness or health, or even of death itself, a new life of endless possibilities can be lived if we are willing to continue our awakening through the practice of AA's 12 steps. And I, you know, I just think about when I, um, you know, came in here, um, all I knew was that I was really, really tired of eating the way I was eating, um, tired of the misery in my head, um, tired of not being the person I thought I was going to be. I had reached a point where I thought, you know, that's it, I'm, I'm never going to be better or mature or grow up or blossom. You know, I'm always going to be this very stilted, unhappy, miserable, disconnected person. And I, I felt very sad about that. But I accepted it. I thought, oh, well, you know, that's, that's, that's it, really. You know, it's all mum's fault, of course, was what I thought. If only mum had loved me more. I'd have been the opposite of all of those things, but, you know, here it was and here I was in all this misery. And, um, you know, I was, I was kind of thinking that I wouldn't look for any solutions to all of this. Um, I had never specifically looked for solutions to my eating problem because I thought the bigger problems were my living problems, and so I was looking, you know, I looked at counselling and um, all sorts of therapies and, um, yeah, ways I could sort of fix that unhappiness in myself. And I just thought that the way I ate, um, you know, which, you know, there was the obvious eating, which was the binging and the vomiting, which really kind of, came to it, into itself in my teenage years and onwards. But, but around that was just the eating I was just doing, the everyday eating. It may have looked like normal eating to somebody else, but inside I just knew I had all this thinking around my eating. And, you know, going to a cafe for a coffee and a slice was, you know, was just, couldn't take anyone with me, had to do it alone, I was all lit up with excitement, oh my God, what was I going to have? Going along, choosing, oh it was so painful, oh my God, there was so much, you know, sitting at the table, eating, drinking with my book or my magazine, um, and then at the end of that, the feeling of incredible shame and 
hoping no one was looking at me and oh my god you know just so embarrassed and sort of slinking out and and you know that didn't look like somebody having a huge you know issue with food but on the inside I just was not normal I just was not normal around my eating um, but yeah I just thought that that was just part of this whole thing that I was just you know a, a kind of a mess in, in so many areas so when I um, happened to see something about a 12-step fellowship for food I sort of thought oh yeah that that eating thing I suppose I can do a bit more therapy oh dear god you know I'll come along and tell you all about you know how mum didn't love me enough and if she'd hugged me more I would have been a different person and you know I had it all in my head I knew I knew it all and so I um, talked to Fran thank you Fran and refused to be 12 stepped OMG um, I was coming along under my own steam and nobody was telling me what to do um, but luckily I was so unwell that all of that sort of sick thinking um, didn't stop me once I came from continuing to come back um, because I knew pretty quickly that what was here was something a bit special and it wasn't people you know running around the hall chanting Hare Krishna and you know nobody was beating a drum and we weren't in flowing robes um, but there was something here that was very um, special um, and silent and I don't know it was well it was recovery I know that now I could very clearly see it in the older members um, because I seem to be able to physically see in their faces this kind of light and gosh that was just amazing um, so yeah so despite all my kind of madness and my ideas about the world and not really being sure about the whole addiction as a disease and you know I, I didn't know about any of that but I did know that there was something amazing here so luckily yeah I kept on coming back and yeah yeah pretty quickly pretty quickly you know I wanted to find myself a sponsor and because I just knew I didn't want to carry on with the eating um, you know I'd got to that point where I no longer was eating because I thought it was fun uh, you know the eating the food had me I was eating because I was powerless and I couldn't stop getting the food buying the food eating the food and so you know I was very very keen for that to sort of no longer be and so I really was open to somebody helping me and somebody kind of please God take this from me I can't do it anymore and I just think oh you know thank you God that I was in that place when I arrived um, because yeah I was willing I was willing to take the direction to do what was suggested and into I suppose it was a surrender it, I didn't think oh here I am surrendering or even feel like here I am surrendering but looking back there must have been a surrender um, because you know I I was reasonably quickly not eating and you know it took me a while to even understand what a miracle that was I just thought oh yeah I'm just you know eating differently now um, but eventually I saw this isn't me I can't do this I can't stop myself eating I can't stop my hand going out to the fruit bowl when I walk past it I can't stop going in the bakeries I just can't stop and yet I wasn't doing it and when I sort of realized that I became quite fearful because I thought oh my god this could go at any second and how do I ensure this keeps going and oh my god you know what to do but of course all I needed to do was just to keep coming and I was talking to my sponsor and following direction and 
you know, she was really helping me understand all about the disease of addiction. And so all of my old thinking about what life was about and who I was and why I was the way I was gradually started being replaced by these ideas about addiction and hearing people talking about the disease of addiction and, and that addicts are bodily and mentally different to other people and you know, hearing people sharing about their thinking and their acting around the food and I really saw, yeah, that was just like me, just like me. Not always exactly like me, but you know, I could see that yes, there's something, there's something, there's something in this, you know, us all being addicts. And of course, not just addicts, but addicts with a solution. And so at first I didn't really get what people were talking about the solution so much and yeah, it, it sort of yeah, it took me a while. It took me a while to really grasp what the solution was. It maybe took me months, I don't know, maybe even years, but in the meantime I was coming and I wasn't eating, and so my life was getting better. My life was also getting harder because my child was um, diagnosed with autism and so I had like quite a lot of challenges on that parenting front, but you know, all throughout all of that, I was being helped, um, you know, by my sponsor, and I was coming to meetings, and I was hearing people talking about their lives, and their recovery, and um, their wellness, and, and you know, I knew, I knew I was in the right place, I knew it was right, and I knew that although my life wasn't, at times, easy, and it didn't sometimes seem like it was getting better, I kind of trusted that I wasn't eating, and so that was, you know, that was always something, I wasn't eating, and so that was, you know, that was enough. And so gradually, gradually, over time, you know, I've been able to develop this, you know, inner <coughs> sense of all as well. And I never had that in the food. I always had the sense of nothing is okay and nothing is well. And so this all is well has come from this fact that I am now, the channel between me and my higher power is now no longer blocked with the, with the substance. And I get to have this relationship with my higher power, this conscious contact with my higher power. And, you know, that is something that has been able to just gradually, gradually unfold as I have taken all the right actions that are in those 12 steps that that reading talked about. And all of those things that I had to do, all of the, you know, looking at my responsibility in my life, you know, my step um, four and five, and and then, you know, looking at those people that I'd harmed and, and amends and, you know, all of that, you know, all of that right action slowly, slowly settled down that madness and, you know, and God was able to start, you know, coming up through the air holes and, and you know, being part of who I am and that, you know, that um, desire to live as God would have me live and be as God would have me be, you know, I, I find that very strong in me and, you know, I very strongly now see others and, you know, feel a, a real desire to help others and to, you know, to take actions that I can take to make life, you know, better for someone else, to not always be thinking about myself, not always. So, you know, things have just gotten so much better and, you know, I'm still a long way from perfect and I've seen myself this week with, you know, fear and anxiety and cowardliness and, you know, all sorts of things. I've still got all of that, but it just feels like there's a huge, huge, huge and beautiful connection to this power greater than myself and to this amazing, amazing um, fellowship 
and you know these steps you know I get to have these steps in my life and I, I get just get to have this incredible life that you know I know I would have never had going in the direction that I was going I, I was just heading for you know insanity or death so yeah so very grateful I'm sure I've missed out huge amounts and not said everything I wanted to say but it's just lovely to be here thank you very much thank you